My name is Ben Stieber, and this is my black hole theory. This theory has not been published or peer-reviewed in any journal. The current black hole theory that particles fall below the event horizon into the singularity is incorrect. The theory is based, at least partially, on transformations of the null geodesics called the Eddington-Finkelstein, or EF, transformation. The EF is applied to the Schwarzschild metric, and it is derived from the tortoise coordinates. The tortoise coordinates have the feature of null geodesics which do not open or close regardless of altitude above or below the event horizon which is located at 2 gm. It was thus assumed that the edges of these null geodesics applied through the EF would provide open light cones through which particles will travel all the way down to the origin singularity. These edges formed the constants V and U. It was also claimed that the transformation would remove the coordinate singularity at 2 gm from the metric. This claim is incorrect. The coordinate singularity remains because the EF is still based upon the tortoise coordinates. For those coordinates is a term which has a value of 2gm times the natural log of 0 at the event horizon, which again is the 2gm coordinate singularity. The term natural log of 0 is undefined, therefore it must be discarded in the best case scenario or corrupt the equation in worst. Assuming that the term may be discarded, we find the tortoise coordinate at the event horizon is r star equals 2gm. In other words, the coordinates equal the very singularity that was supposed to be removed. According to the tortoise coordinates, above the event horizon are open light cones. Below the event horizon are also open light cones, but a singularity which would close them lies between. What's going on? Here in parallel we see both incoming and outgoing null geodesics of the current EF coordinates. The closing geodesics of each system are denoted as I and O respectively. The light cones do not close until the origin, but they must pass through the aforementioned singularity. If we transform back to the Schwarzschild, it is plain to see that the light cones close at the event horizon and then invert below it. If the light cones invert below the event horizon, then the actual EF coordinates will look like this. The normal and inverted light cones are fully open at infinity and the origin, respectively. If the light cones invert below the event horizon, then the actual space-time diagrams of the EF constants V and U will look like this and this, respectively. The evidence that the light cones invert below the event horizon is found in the Schwarzschild metric. Above the event horizon, the metric takes the form negative, positive, positive, positive. Below the horizon, the metric is positive, negative, positive, positive. These values may be inverted, but the inversion between 0, 0, and 1, 1 will still be present. The Schwarzschild metric is spherically symmetric. If there is an inversion at the event horizon, then the geometry expected would be that of a pseudosphere. From the polar view, the geometry of a pseudosphere is identical to the cross-section of a black hole. Since the coordinate singularity of the event horizon remains in the metric, it must be removed. The Einstein-Rosen provides a transformation which does the job. If u squared equals r minus 2m is substituted into the metric, the singularity is removed. However, time vanishes at the event horizon. Thus, world lines cannot cross the event horizon to enter the black hole. This means that all the mass of the black hole piles up around the event horizon and would thus undergo gravitational collapse forming new black holes. The mass collapsing around those black holes would also undergo gravitational collapse, and so on and so forth. This constant collapsing of space-time in black holes means that these pseudospherical throats of space-time are always being produced and replaced as their event horizons compete for mass. A particular throat can be sustained if it can connect to a second black hole, forming an Einstein-Rosen bridge. The behavior is analogous to string theory, in which open strings are constantly produced but cannot induce forces, and closed strings can form at distant points on the brain of space-time, provided they have the anchor points, in this case, black holes. The tension on the closed strings between the black holes curves the space-time of the universe and is the source of the so-called dark matter gravity. Let us now suppose that there is a black hole in which we can drop all the mass of the universe. The universe is now empty, except for a single black hole. Suppose that the universe were to collapse on this black hole, meaning that the volume of the universe equals the volume of the black hole. The universe is now a black hole at every location. 
within the universe emerges dark energy, which forces the black hole outward. Eventually, dark energy forces the black hole to its Schwarzschild radius. The pressure placed upon all locations will make the surface homogeneous and isotropic. When dark energy overcomes the gravitational force, the universe rises above its Schwarzschild radius. The universe ceases to be a black hole, and a big bang occurs. The universe is hot and dense and inflates quickly from having been burst. Much of the universe will be space filled with elementary particles, but black holes left over as shrapnel from the Big Bang are to be expected and will form the cores of galaxies. Going forward into time, an observer will be able to record events in the past by looking across great distances as far as the cosmic horizon allows. If the observer were able to see far enough away, it would insist that a Big Bang has occurred at every location in the distant past, which is exactly as predicted.